Today is the day the Lord has made. Let us Let rejoice, rejoice and be glad. And be glad in it. Welcome everyone to our recorded Easter dawn, well, Easter day as we can see, recording. I uh, want to welcome everybody and thank you for your faithful contributions to the ministries here at Swamp. It's critically important. Thank you for that. Not a lot of announcements today. I just want to remind you to take a look and put in your calendars. May 21st is our spring fling here. That'll run from 11 to 2 on that Saturday. And then the day following, May 22nd at 4 p.m. is my installation service, officially installing me as your pastor. So I encourage you to come to that. It'll be followed by a light supper. We'll have a good time. I'm unaware right now of any hospitalizations or severe health concerns. I do invite you to take again, take a look at the list in your bulletins of those on our prayer list and keep them in your prayers throughout the week. Birthdays this week. Monday, Laura Pennebecker. Tuesday, Judy Habecker. Wednesday, Sally Hagee and Kathy Hickernell. Thursday, Ron Arts and Josh Jones. And on Friday, Sandy Hawes. And now we begin our worship today by singing hymn number 365, verses 1 and 4. Jesus Christ is risen today. for our redemption and by his glorious resurrection you delivered us from the power of death make us die every day to sin that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection through your son jesus christ our lord who lives and reigns with you and the holy spirit one god now and forever amen, amen. our first reading is from the 10th chapter of acts Peter's sermon delivered at the home of Cornelius, a Roman officer, is a summary of the essential message of Christianity. Everyone who believes in Jesus, whose life, death, and resurrection fulfilled the words of the prophets, receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The lesson reads, Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality. But in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. 
We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sin through his name. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Our second reading is from 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Paul describes the consequences of the resurrection, including the promise of new life in Christ, to a world that has been in bondage to death. He celebrates the destruction of evil and the establishment of God's victorious rule over all. St. Paul writes, If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ. But each in his own order, Christ the first fruits. Then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Our gospel today is from the Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Evidently expecting to find Jesus' corpse, some of the women among his followers go to the tomb with embalming spices. After a perplexing encounter with the empty tomb and angelic visitors, the women become the first to proclaim the amazing news of resurrection. The gospel speaks. On the first day of the week at early dawn, the women came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again? Then they remembered his words and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words to them, but these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen clothes by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable and suitable in your sight. O God, our rock, our strength, and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. You know, back in 2010, my family took a mini vacation to Washington, D.C. to see some of the sights there. We decided to stay at a hotel in Rockville, Maryland, and then we rode the metro, the subway system, down into downtown D.C., and so as we were preparing to head home, Jen asked me to go get our minivan from the parking garage and bring it around to the hotel entrance for loading. Now, when I got to the spot where I parked the van, I couldn't find it. I mean, I searched the whole level and one above it and one below it, nothing. So I walked back to the hotel entrance and I found Jen and Abby waiting there for me. They had puzzled looks on their faces. Where's the van, Jen asked. I said, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know, she said. It's not there, I told her. Well, in disbelief, 
Abby decided to drag me back to the garage to look for it because obviously I didn't know what I was doing. Well, we searched every space on the level where I parked the van and no van and we looked everywhere. We looked high and low, but we found no van. What we did find were the rear two rows of seats in some other spot on the other side of our level. So the conclusion we reached is that van was stolen. The police figured it had been stolen and gonna be used for home invasion because the seats were taken out to make more room. Now thankfully friends came to pick us up and, and our seats and they brought us all home. And we did get our stolen van back, but that's a very, very long story for another day. But nevertheless, this episode was similar to the one encountered by the women who went to Jesus' tomb that first Easter Sunday. No, they weren't looking for a van, but both scenes were scenes of perplexity and disbelief, bewilderment and doubt. Now, in my case, it was me who was perplexed and Jen and Abby who were in disbelief. In our gospel today, it was the women who were perplexed and the apostles were the ones in disbelief. Bewilderment and doubt characterized that very first Easter Sunday. The women, as we know and as we read, had become to prepare the dead body for burial, which was the custom of the day. But to their surprise, there was no body there. And they were perplexed. But their state of bewilderment, well, it quickly changes to terror as two shimmering angels tell them that Jesus had been risen from the dead. They say, why do you look for the living among the dead? And they reminded them that Jesus told them this is what would happen, and it did. So the women rushed back to tell the apostles and the others following Jesus what they had experienced, and they were met with disbelief. And then just like my Abbey, Peter had to go check it out for himself, and he returned amazed. Bewilderment and doubt. You know, it's nothing new, and it's not confined to the apostles. I mean, St. Paul addresses this in his letter to the Corinthian church. He assures them. I'm sorry. He assures them that Christ has risen and that their faith is not in vain. Now, I don't know about you, but I need this very same reassurance. With all this evil and suffering and injustice in this world, well, it creates doubt. I mean, humanity, while beautiful in so many ways, is fundamentally broken. And so for me, I need the empty tomb. I need the promise of the resurrection. And yet in this crazy world, we often struggle with doubt, just like the apostles did. Of course, the difference between us and the apostles is that they saw and touched and ate with the risen Christ. I mean, in Acts, Peter tells the early church members, this Jesus God has raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. And so you see, they each encountered Jesus in profoundly individual ways. And so regardless of how, they each experienced Easter. The resurrection meets them just where they are. It's the same thing for us, but in different ways. I mean, we come to the empty tomb as ourselves, for good or for ill. We carry all our luggage with us, all those hurts, fears, disappointments. And we encounter the risen Christ in the particulars of our own lives. Therefore, we need to seek and find in the empty tomb the hope we need for our own struggles, our own losses, our traumas, you name it. And so when we exclaim he is risen, he is risen indeed, we do so in the fertile ground of our own stories, our own hearts. And it all begins in that fertile graveyard where we linger long enough in our desolation and our loneliness, long enough to hear the sound of our own names spoken back to us in love. Like Mary's testimony, Ours only ring true when they originate in the radical, intimate encounter, however mysterious and quiet that that may be at times. Now, I can say for me in my life, 
Those encounters with Christ occurred in the shadows of loss and pain and struggle. Those times when all seemed lost and the way forward could not be seen. In those barren places where the usual platitudes fall flat and easy answers prove inadequate. It's at those times when I lingered in my feelings of emptiness, darkness, and drought that Jesus reveals himself and brings clarity, hope, and healing. And it was not in any way that I was seeking nor expected. And it came through events or through others, often those I least expected or even wanted. And when I was confronted, sometimes I ran like Peter did. Sometimes I witnessed, like Mary. Either way, when Jesus speaks my name, he erases my old, worn ideas about him. And I recognize both him and myself anew. Folks, I think the lesson for all of us on this Easter day is to ask ourselves anew, why is the resurrection of Jesus essential to me? Why does Christ rising look like in my life? Why do I believe? Why do I believe? And if you need to wait a good long time to receive your answer, well, take heart. This type of revelation is neither automatic nor is it easy. And it requires risk. The risk of hanging on to hope when all else that we have tried has failed. You've heard it before. Faith is a journey. And I think it's helpful for us to reflect on St. Anselm of Canterbury's observation that the Christian life is faith seeking understanding. Indeed, as the renowned preaching professor Fred Craddock has observed, matters of faith are never finally proven, nor is faith generated by an incontrovertible argument. And so I would argue that faith is felt, that it's experienced. It's fed by word and sacrament. It's cultivated by the joys and struggles of our life, producing fruit in ways we just never quite expect. And so wherever you may find yourself on this Easter day, be it in doubt or darkness or in joy or in light, the invitation we receive begins right where we find ourselves. Because the resurrection grows in us wherever we are. It roots us and roots itself in us. And often we don't realize it until we look in the rear view mirror of the graveyards of our lives. In those retrospective moments, that's when we discover our salvation and our Savior. And so my hope for you all this Easter is for the Christ who rose in the darkness to lead us all into new life, new light, and new hope. May we experience him in the dimly lit places the shadowy dark corners of our lives, you know, those hard places in which we find ourselves stuck. And may we linger long enough at the tomb until he calls our names and sends us forth to share his good news with the world in word and deed. And when we are asked, why Christian? May our answers be authentic and honest and hard-earned. May they be testimonies of hope and struggle welded together to form the witness of our truth. Happy Easter, folks. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Live your lives as the precious resurrection people that you are. Because that, my friends, is the good news in Christ Jesus for us today and every single day of our lives. And so now may the peace that surpasses our human understanding keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. And let all God's people say, Amen. Amen.
On this day of resurrection joy, let us offer our prayers for ourselves, our neighbors, and our world. Renewing God, the good news of your resurrection changed the world. Give church leaders and all the baptized the same excitement as the women at the tomb. And inspire us to share your abundant life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Sustaining God, your creation abounds with signs of new life in budding trees and newborn creatures. Provide fertile soil, ample sunlight, and nourishing rain for the growth of plants. And provide farmers with a plentiful harvest. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Sheltering God to strengthen and sustain all who support vulnerable people across the world, especially those helping Ukrainian refugees. Empower government agencies and international organizations that provide for refugees and migrants forced to leave their homelands. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Encouraging God, you do a new thing among us. We pray for those gripped by fear and an anxiety and who suffer in any way. Help those on our prayer list and all those we name before you now silently in our hearts. Send us as your healing presence to places of hunger, pain, illness, or overwhelming sorrow. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Surprising God, you offer endless ways for us to delight in your grace. Give this community of faith a sense of joy and wonder in exploring new avenues of faith formation, worship, and discipleship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Resurrecting God, you made us alive in Christ. Thank you for blessing us with faithful witnesses who now rest in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. We offer to you these petitions and those we carry in our hearts, trusting in your abundant and ever-present mercy. Amen. Amen. Now please join me in praying the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our the Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come your, your will be done. done. On, on earth, earth as, as in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us today to our daily bread. Forgive, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And now receive God's blessing. You are children of God anointed with the oil of gladness and strengthened for the journey. Almighty God, motherly, majestic, and mighty, bless you this day and always. Amen. Amen. And now we conclude our worship by singing the first and fourth verses of hymn number 367. Now all the vault of heavens resound. <laughs>
Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Tell what God has done. Thanks be to God.